There are a lot of heads on the market that have some kind of center dot or patch built into the head, and today we're gonna sidestep all that and do some experimenting on our own. set the stage for what we're doing today, we're starting out with a unaffected, brand new, 10 mil coated G1 batter head. Nothing funny going on with it. Let's hear how this sounds first. Hopefully this is unsurprising to everyone watching. It sounds like a drum. It sounds like a wide open snare drum. Sounds good. However, we want to see what happens when we start to get into the realm of adding mass to the center of the head, akin to the way that center dot heads do this. Rather than spending the extra money, which is sometimes half again more than a standard head, to get another one, we're going to do this with gaff tape today. So what we're going to do is we're going to take tape, we're going to take the drum head, and we're going to place the tape on the drum head thusly. This is going to come off as the most lo-fi hack we have ever done and probably also the cheapest and that's because it is. But the effect is dramatic and we were really pleased with the results. We're going to swap this out, tune it to the same pitch and see what's going to get us today. Super interesting because I know not everyone has played center dot heads before. I don't play them often, but I have played them a lot. And shockingly, or maybe not shockingly, this is behaving so similarly to center dot heads. We were really surprised. The thing that I think of when I think of center dot heads is punchiness in the center and a little bit of suppression of overtones. There's still the power of the whole thing. It doesn't sound muffled exactly, but because there's more mass in the center, the whole behavior of the head is different. Let's listen to single hits back and forth between the two so you can hear the difference. The addition of the tape in the patched location, a center dot location, is giving us a much meatier and fatter sound at that location, while also giving a much rounder, broader, and also more sustainy sound in the snare wires when we move to rim shots. This is super cool and is actually indicative of snare sounds that I associate or have literally seen played on center dot heads, especially in more aggressive rock situations. Not that this is limited to that, it's just a sound and it feels very good too. You can play it quietly as well. If you like what you're seeing today and you enjoy these experiments, please follow the link below to the Patreon. It's the best way to help us continue to do this. There will be definitely extended plays from today's episode, along with anecdotes and other things over there. Go check it out and see if there's a place for you.
In addition to the sound differences here, we are also having to tension this head a little bit differently than a uncenter dotted head because there is more mass. So to get the same pitch, we're actually having to tune it tighter. On the other hand, if we tuned it to the exact same tension as the unaffected drum head, we would end up with a lower pitched head at the same tension, which gives us a different feel and a much, much meatier sound. Of course, with any hack like this, there are some trade-offs, and the main one here is that there's a little bit of loss of rebound in the sensation of playing the center of the head, particularly with things like ghost notes and roughs and things like that. This, again, goes in line with factory design center dot or patch heads, and this is also true whether it's on the bottom or on the side that you're striking. You're still adding mass there, which is slowing everything down and making it a little bit more sluggish, again, at lower dynamics. This, is, of course, is a thing that plenty of people work around. Lots of amazing drummers play these heads exclusively, so it's not something to necessarily deter you away from it, but if you're uncomfortable with the idea of buying a head that may not ultimately be something you're going to want to use, you don't have to spend that money. Start off with a little bit of tape in the center of the ones you already have. You're going to get a real clear idea of what is in store for you if you do choose to make that investment. Similar to our recent video about using an E-ring underneath the batter head to control, this is another instance where we aren't affecting the playing surface when we add tape to the bottom so we can still do whatever we want on there, playing with hands, brushes, any implement you can think of, we are still unrestricted. Additionally, there's a lot of real estate underneath that, so you could branch out from a center dot and try other things, lines across, whatever you want to do, and just see if it gets you something that makes you happy once you put it back together. You could even put a center dot on the head along with the earring hack from our earlier video and go super extreme into the center punch, especially if you want to go for very low tunings, which frankly, when we put that earring in there, got us the best like snom low tuning we have ever had. One thing also to note here is that this is not changing the durability of the head that we're using at all. And it's debatable whether or not factory dotted heads are really adding a lot of durability in the long run. They feel a lot different, they sound a lot different, and that's what we're focusing on here. One of the greatest things about a lot of the hacks that we've covered here that is also true of this one today is that it does something to the sound of the drum through the entire dynamic range. Whether you are smashing rim shots or playing very gently on the head, the entire scope of the behavior of the drum has changed. And anytime we get something like that, it adds to the versatility and can be an option no matter what the playing situation is if there's something in that sound that's working for you in that context. The fact that hacks like this are also non-destructive and can be removed and adjusted and manipulated super easily adds to the value of exploring possibilities like this because you know going in that you're not going to lose money, you're just going to spend a little time and learn more about the instrument. We hope you dug what we got into today here. This was super fun and just wanted to mention that this does not stop at the snare drum. This could be usable on toms. It could even be usable on the rezzo side of the toms, possibly. Who knows? Could even get into the bass drum on the outside, on the inside. The world is your oyster. Try every possibility you can think of and go after that sound until you find something you love. Yeah.